Hello and welcome. You are watching UATV News with me, Ksenia Buhai. Let's start with the latest developments. Ukraine and the United States agreed on the date of President Volodymyr Zelensky's visit to Washington. It is scheduled for August 30th. What are the expectations concerning the outcome of the first official visit of head of Ukrainian state to the United States? Watch more details in the following report. The United States' unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity in the face of Russia's ongoing aggression in the Donbas and occupied Crimea. This is how the White House described the invitation to Volodymyr Zelensky to visit Washington on August 30. The visit will affirm the United States' unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity in the face of Russia's ongoing aggression in the Donbas and Crimea, our close cooperation on energy security, and our backing for President Zelensky's efforts to tackle corruption and implement a reform agenda based on our shared democratic values. Ukrainian political scientists consider the upcoming meeting of Volodymyr Zelensky and Joseph Biden to be an opportunity to convey their message to the international community. For Ukraine, the meeting with Joe Biden administration is important in terms of several factors. The first one is undoubtedly the resistance to Russian aggression. It is an opportunity to convey our message, including on the energy security of Ukraine and Europe. This is an opportunity to agree on positions on the remaining key issues of the two-sided agenda. One of the main issues to be raised at the meeting is reforms in Ukraine. This was previously mentioned by U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. It will focus on judicial reform, the activities of anti-corruption bodies, corporate governance, as well as reform of the security service. In this case, the Ukrainian government has to take an equidistant position and implement the same standards for everyone. This will be an important signal and readiness of the Ukrainian side to provide not only promises, but also concrete evidence that this is the course of Ukrainian side will follow in the nearest future. This will be a very important element of the negotiation process. Meanwhile, the U.S. Congress called on Joe Biden to change the date of Volodymyr Zelensky's visit, because at this time they have vacation, and the congressmen want to meet with the Ukrainian president. This was stated by Marcy Kaptur, co-chair of the support group for Ukraine in the U.S. Congress, in a commentary to The Voice of America. I don't like this time at all. We send letters to the president urging that this date be changed so that members of Congress are here in Washington at the same time. I hope the president will consider this. I know that he is very busy. This is the first year of his administration. But changing the date isn't that difficult. And allowing us to have a proper dialogue with the Ukrainian president. The day chosen for the visit of Volodymyr Zelensky was also criticized by the senators. The White House pushed the visit from July to the August recess. President Zelensky won't be able to engage members of Congress, who on a bipartisan basis oppose Biden's surrender to Putin on Nord Stream 2. Probably just a coincidence. Meanwhile, the office of the president of Ukraine has already announced the visit to Washington of the head of the office of the president, Andriy Yermak, and the minister of foreign affairs of Ukraine, Mutokuleba. They will prepare Volodymyr Zelensky's visit and agree on topics for negotiations. Reported by Ina Kosinska, Ksenia Buhai, UATV News. The European Union condemns the militarization of Russian-occupied Crimea and attempts to restrict freedom of navigation through the Kursk Strait. This is declared in a statement by European Union. In addition, the EU is concerned about the legislation adopted by the occupation authorities in Crimea. According to the documents, only Russian citizens can own land in certain so-called border regions of the peninsula. The EU believes that this can destabilize the security situation not only in Ukraine and the Black Sea, but also in the region as a whole. The permanent representative of Ukraine to the international organizations in Vienna, Yevhen Symbaluk, also spoke at the meeting of the OSC Permanent Council. He called on Russia to take responsibility for the crash of flight MH17 in July 2014. This was done with the direct support of the Russian Federation, which illegally sent its book missile system through the uncontrolled section of the Ukrainian-Russian state border. All those responsible must be identified and punished. Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 was shot down on July 17, 2014, in eastern Ukraine after being hit by a Russian-made book missile system. All 298 people on board most of whom were citizens of the Netherlands, died in the crash. 
Fragile ceasefire. One year ago, the Trali Trollkonta group signed a document to provide a complete and comprehensive ceasefire in eastern Ukraine. It came into force on July 27, 2020. It is considered the most productive ceasefire since the outbreak of hostilities. The number of shelling and casualties has decreased significantly. However, Russia keeps violating all the agreements. The truce declared in 2020 was supposed to stop the shelling in Donbass forever. It was based on the decision of the Normandy Four made during the Paris summit in December. But only six months later, the Ukrainian side managed to achieve the signing of an agreement within the framework of the trilateral contact group. We were interested in saving the lives of our military. There was also a political factor because Volodymyr Zelensky promised ceasefire. It was important for him to ensure it. Well, the third is a personal factor. President of Ukraine is a very emphatic person. He is very sensitive to a new death on the front line. For the first time since hostilities started in eastern Ukraine, signing of such an agreement led to a significant reduction in shelling and casualties. But even during the preparation of the agreement, the members of the Ukrainian delegation to the trilateral contact group understood in case Russia takes such a step, it will want to get something in return. That's what happened. The Kremlin began to push its ideas on the negotiating platform. Russia agreed to sign the document because it hoped for subjectivation of separate areas of Donetsk and Luhansk regions through the same joint inspections. Moreover, this is the way they tried to raise the status of the trilateral contact group where there are separate areas of Donetsk and Luhansk regions and instead to lower the status of the Normandy 4. A few months after the ceasefire was imposed, it became clear that they would not make concessions to the Kremlin. In December 2020, the escalation of hostilities began in the Donbass. Illegal armed groups have increased the number of attacks. Russia changed this tactic by sending snipers there, which is really ugly, it means cynical. And this naturally violates the ceasefire agreement that the Russian Federation actually supported. Since then, illegal armed groups in the Donbass have only increased the number of shellings. During the year, the OSC recorded 2,000 violations of the truce on the part of gang formations. Meanwhile, Kremlin was not going to sign a new agreement to resolve the situation. Another document was proposed, which in particular prescribed the expansion of the OSC's powers. However, Russia kept blocking its adoption. They understand that if the OSCE is empowered, there will be more truthful information about how they conduct it at night and throughout the territory. Therefore, they do not go for it, because it will show their true face. And this is the face of imperialist and invader. Experts say that only pressure from other countries, especially the United States, will be able to make Russia adhere to the ceasefire agreements. After all, Ukraine is not going to react to blackmail and make political concessions to the Kremlin, reported by Ksenia Buha and Yulia Krychkova, UATV News. The United States criticized Vladimir Putin's article about Ukraine. The statement was published on the website of the United States mission to the OSCE. American diplomats believe that Putin's words about Russia's readiness for dialogue with Ukraine are not being implemented in practice. If the Russian Federation wants to be a considered wants to be considered a partner, then it has to fulfill the Minsk agreements and stop armed aggression against Ukraine and the occupation of Crimea. The president of Russia wrote, Russia respects the Ukraine's desire to see their country free, safe and prosperous. He knows full well that aspiration cannot be fully realized as long as Russia-led forces continue to wreak havoc in the Donbass and occupied Crimea. Indeed, the whole aim of the Kremlin's aggression in Ukraine is thwarting Ukraine's aspiration. Ukrainian athletes started competing for medals at the Olympic Games in Tokyo qualifying rounds in archery started a few hours before the official opening of the Olympics. There are four athletes from Ukraine in this discipline. In general, Ukraine will be represented by 158 Olympians in 25 sports. They will arrive in Tokyo in groups 
current participant and Natalie saw the 2016 Olympics, Jean Bolinyuk, in an exclusive interview with our channel, told in which disciplines Ukrainians can show high results. The first in principle gold medalist in independent Ukraine is Vyacheslav Olinik, who represents the Greco-Roman wrestling. It was the 1996 Atlanta Games. In addition, we have very strong gymnastics, very strong fencing, boxing and judo. We now have representatives who are expected to perform well. We also have representatives who show high results in swimming and athletics. Southern Ukraine is going to surprise the whole country. Kherson region is preparing for the large-scale Dream Gogol Fest festival. It is coincide with the 30th anniversary of Ukraine's independence. Our correspondent try to find out what surprises are being prepared. Details next. Attend and send dunes around. The Sandy Mess of Aleshki Sands is one of the visiting cards of the Kherson region. This is the place where they plan to hold a special event within the framework of the Google Fest festival. At sunset people will come here and various miracles will happen in this darkness. It will be music, performance, it will be a video all together. International theater, opera, night music program, educational meetings and excursions. On September 4th and 5th, Kherson will turn into a center of contemporary art. This year, the days of the Google Fest coincided with the International Theater Festival Melpomene of Tevria, so their organizers decided to unite their efforts. We have the idea to combine the energy of the two festivals. So we are making a powerful festival, one of the largest in Ukraine. And there is a big interest, you know, after the pandemic. We did not even expect that so many people from abroad, even from Syria, will come to us. We were negotiating about it. We are very happy that there are so many tourists and people from other cities. It is very pleasant that Google Fest travels around the cities of Ukraine. And it is very good that a group of very creative and bright personalities gathers in the Kherson region. The Google Fest festival in Kherson will be held for the second time. Last year the locals saw a unique open-air light show. Yanina Lebedeva, UATV News. That was our final story this week. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter pages.